The main thing also is to notice how there's a big radius here. If you look at it, you see this area right there uh, that's, that's dark. I am want to try to pull that in. I'm going to move about a hundred thousandths or so and let it have a slower bend so that the turn isn't as dramatic. It makes a dramatic turn right here. If I can lay that out to be a little bit better turn, it's going to it's going to lower the resistance and make a big difference in the lower RPM to mid ranges and mainly his gas mileage. So I'm going to go ahead and start this and notice the area here that I'm going to work on the most. Uh, that this right here is is going to make a big difference. Look how much meat I mean just right here. I just wanted to show you how that pulls in and how I'm going to try to move that over right there in that wall and take some of that fillet out so she's got more of a direct shot in here. I would be tickled to death. Uh, this customer that owns this head is a mileage miser. He really watches his miles and his gas mileage. So I'll probably get an accurate report. What I'm hoping for, if I get a seven mile per gallon increase, I will just be tickled to death. And uh, it's not at all possible. I've took heads like this, like I told you earlier. I, the best I've ever got was 10 miles to a gallon on a Honda VTEC head. All right, all for now. Now I'm getting ready to work the bowls. I've already done a couple to see what I had to do. Uh, this is the long turn of the back side of the bowls. Let's zoom in there. And from the factory, this thing has a pretty nasty transition. You can see the shiny metal, of course. I've already got that painted green, but it's a humongous ridge that comes up where the 70 degree angle is what I'm guessing it is comes up and there's the short turn. I'm going to roll that in, pull that back and roll it right in to the 70 degree angle. And of course the real trick here is going to be after I do the three angle valve job to it, catching the overhang and pulling it into the aluminum. So I'm careful about how much I'm taking out until I get to that point. But it's pretty nasty right in here mainly which is the short turn. It's an abrupt radius. And uh, this is another area of airflow that's not a lot of material removal, but will yield serious gains on fuel mixture, atomization, and gas mileage. This is going to be a big trick. Wait till you see when I turn it over to the other side how them two ports split. There's a d big divider wall right here, and I got to roll it, radius it, and straighten it up. So anyway, I'll go on to the next part. I thought I'd show you real quick how bad that is, but I'll go in here and like I said you can see how much I'm pulling to that edge. Mainly it's a it's a shape thing, but this is going on a daily driving car. It does not performance, it don't have a performance chip. I'm very careful on how much material I'm removing so that it don't have a check engine light come on. But mainly, this is what I call my stage three MPG mode on any car or uh, on any four cylinder and just going in there fine tuning it doing a good valve job and some blending and just kind of leveling the ports uh, this is going to get like I said good gas mileage anyway you've heard it a thousand times but anyhow I'm pulling it right up where I see it starts to turn into the hardened seat 
and then I got to stop until the valve job is done so I can get in there and radius it and figure out what I'm doing. Okay, that's the back side of the intake bowl and we'll go on and I got to do the exhaust course and we'll get back. This is the shot here that I thought would get you. And I love doing these things because they're just so different. But anyway, here we go. Let's zoom in on it. I'm thinking the light will get it. All right. Look at our divider. Remember me telling you that one side is low lift, the other side is high lift. Which do you think which is which? Now notice that this side right here is a lot shorter to the short turn while this one is a raised deal. Okay. Well, it's apparent. Um, I'm sure most of y'all probably smart enough to know this because it's closer to the wall. The short turn height is a little bit taller, but when you look at the port in an overall picture, not to let the uh, trees get in the way of the forest, however that works, this is the off idle and the main one that's setting the pace at about 2,500 RPM, maybe 3,000. Sorry, guys. Okay? This is our baby right here. Then all of a sudden, boom, it switches sides and starts pulling in the high lift airflow. So I'm pretty sure I said that in the beginning. I'd have to go back and listen to the tape, but uh, sometimes I get my words crossed up. But I knew the D-shape was the, was the deal because of the D-shape and positive and negative pressure. This is your baby right here. It's actually interesting, the technology that Ford put into this. Uh, they do a lot of innovative stuff. I'm not a Pontiac guy, Chevrolet guy, a Ford guy. I'm a mathematics and port shape guy. So it don't matter what it is to me, I'm looking at this in form of a mathematical equation inside this runner. And considering the guidelines they have with emissions being a part of it, fuel mileage, this is a heck of a thing. Now, they don't, I don't believe they do it quite like this anymore. But it really done good, and I'm turning it into what they designed it to be. But look at this divider. Now, I've got to do a lot of radius work in here and blending. This right here is coming as a protrusion. If you look at the short turn, this is coming out a good hundred and thousands. What I've got to do is roll this and pull it back level with the guide. So anyway, I wanted to show you what's going on and how that looked when I get ready to reshape this. Uh, Right now, I've got about eight hours in it. Probably, I'm looking at about 12 more before it's completion. Thank God, because uh, the customer's going to be here tomorrow around about 4 o'clock to pick it up. So all my magic, I have to work before he gets here. But I'll spend a lot of time pulling that back and pulling this ton back. Because if I go in there right now with a three angle and a depth cut, I'm probably going to hit the stone right about right here. I can't have that. And that stone shape tells you a lot. But anyway, I just wanted to show it to you. This is a hoot right here, boy. I love these. Kind of like the uh, TBI head that I done that was quite the challenge. Oh, my God. My hand is still hurting me from that head. But anyway, we're going to go in here, chop this, roll this back, and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing and why. But anyway, just wanted to give you a look at the divider while I'm reshaping the bowls. We'll continue later on. Okay, right now I've switched to the exhaust. As I've always said, I tried to get as much done um, with each individual cutter. But before I could do this, one of the areas here that is really a messed up case is the valve guides. Okay, look here what we got going on. Uh, wow, I better get a better shot. Uh, over here, I've took care of the guide, which is a big problem in the way, air turbulence. Look how much material I've got to butcher out of the sides and mainly the roof. But you got this guide in the way, and I've measured the guide length, and we're good. Now, let's come on and zoom on in, and like, wow, look at all that guide right there. See, it's keeping me from raising the roof, hitting the back of the bow. So what do we do? We're going to get rid of the guide, but I wanted to show you. Nothing will be touched on the bottom, 
We're gonna come over on the side, over on the side. Now, uh, this is where about 50% or more of the problem is, is on the exhaust. And thank God, it is the one area that I can take a lot of meat out of that will not affect but help promote gas mileage. Because we got to get rid of the exhaust and alter the shape so that it blends into the cast iron manifolds. But I can take uh, material out here and go crazy cross-sectionally to space it out. Why? Because this is exiting air and fuel, not bringing more in. And this is going to increase gas mileage, so this is the only area right here that I can get away with, with altering port shape without a consequence of altering uh, the check engine light and causing a deferential on um, uh, the, the, uh, the fuel injectors of the motor. Now, let me show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to go in here. I think I might can get you a better view off sideways. Hold All right. I mean, basically, goodbye, God, right? Okay. See that chunk I just chopped out? Now I'm going to come on. Look at that. Let's get a top view. That now, now that the guide boss is down, I can go in here and here. That is really a good shape port. Begin the trench, come down on each side, and pull this up, get a little bit of width, and get the funnel exit. So, I mean, this is a really good opportunity right here to get some really good shape out of this port. Um, I'd say at least half, if not more, even though all that work I'm doing on the intake part, reshaping the split of the runner blade, and then going in here on the combustion chambers and opening that up, I would be willing to say that most of the gain is going to come here because I could alter the shape like I can. All right, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get on here. Let me show you real quick. Well, hold on a minute. I'm not going to go crazy, but what I am going to do is alter it. This is going to set my depth. Hold on. It'll set my depth uh, right here. So let's go. See how I'm laying into it right there? Uh, I'm starting to, uh, you know, form a trench. and But I'm not going to go all the way up. And one of the reasons why is I don't have the exhaust manifold. Man, if I had that, you wouldn't believe the shape I could. But this is kind of a surprise to the man because he's a very good customer over the past few years. And... You know, he's, he's, he's done a lot of work, and he's very knowledgeable. The man that owns this, Tim Crutcher, uh, he's probably the smartest airflow guy that I have ever met in my life that ain't had a lot of hands-on experience. He's more of a mathematician, and um, it's amazing. I can carry on a conversation with him like I would Bernard Mondello or David Vazard or any of the other people. Uh, you know, you ever seen that kind of guy in school? 
that could go in there and study 15 minutes worth of math and it'd take you all night to do, this is this guy. So when he sees this, he's going to be flipped because, you know, I didn't tell him. I'm not charging him anything for it. You know how us southern guys do. We remember the people that help us. But it, it, it's one of them times I'll be doing something for somebody that truly appreciates what I'm doing, and that does a lot. Anyway, let's finish it up a little bit. 